activities that we've had. Oh, sorry, uh, some of the activities that we've had together. And Steve, you uh, mentioned the visit, the delegation that you organized back in 2019 to the Kurdistan region. And uh, this was very memorable for many reasons, but one of them was that the US Chamber of Commerce signed an MOU with the Federation of Kurdistan Chambers of Commerce. And this for us was very important and we're delighted that this took place. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we haven't really been able to do anything on the ground as Steve mentioned, but of course there have been these online activities, but we're mindful that that MOU is there. It's a very strong sign of the partnership that we have generally between Kurdistan and the United States, but particularly among the businesses and uh, we would like to see that MOU uh, perhaps implemented uh, in other creative ways since COVID seems to be with us for now uh, into the foreseeable future. The other really main point that I want to make is uh, to really appreciate uh, Robert Paladino, Pal 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 excuse me, Robert, I do know your surname, <laughs> Robert Paladino, his predecessors, uh, Rob Waller and others. Uh, the role of the Consul General, of course, is an important role in itself uh, within the State Department and in Kurdistan it's viewed as very important. But I would say for us, it's a, a really an important role in terms of the bridge that it builds between the Kurdistan region and Washington. Of course, there's the ambassador in Baghdad, Ambassador Matthew Tula, but uh, for us in Kurdistan, we look to the Consul General. The role is seen as very important. And I can see that Robert has already been out and about in Kurdistan, practicing his Kurdish, uh, reassuring our public about the situation in Afghanistan, but also meeting so many people in the community from a wide variety of fields, uh, journalists, activists, NGOs, businesses, of course, as well as the political leadership. So Robert, uh, we can already see that you're doing a fantastic job from uh, social media and uh, so on, but uh, look very much forward to what you have to say today. And uh, again, we in the Kurdistan region really appreciate our partnership with the United States, whether it's through the US Chamber and the business community or with the military partnership and the diplomatic relationship as well. And with that, I'll hand over back to you, Steve. Well, thank you, Bayan. And, and I think one thing that's really interesting is you're, you're right. I think we've all been following Robert on social media. And we were saying in the, in the green room how he's really hit the ground running um, and is really getting out and about, which is wonderful. And also uh, breeds jealousy for those of us who aren't traveling there. And, uh, you know, I'm me remembering back to, you know, going to Cork Mountain or Lake Dukan or the Citadel and and just seeing people. And uh, yeah, it's just a, a note of jealousy, uh, Robert, and that you're there and you're, you're getting out and making the rounds. Um, but let me go ahead and I'll introduce uh, Robert and then uh, we'll, we'll hear from him. And then we do want to open it up uh, with this session because he is new there at Post. Um, a, a lot of it is an opportunity for those online uh, to share you know, their experiences on doing business in the Kurdistan region, be it on the opportunity side and where you see things going and developing, uh, or some of the challenges that you may have experienced. It's essentially an opportunity to uh, help inform him of uh, your impressions of, of opportunities in the Kurdistan region. But Robert Palandino did assume uh, a charge of the U.S. Consulate General or in, or Bill in July of 2021. Um, he is a career diplomat and he's worked on key foreign policy and national security challenges across Asia, Europe, and the Middle East. Uh, most recently, he served as the Chief of Staff to the Deputy Secretary of State, um, as the Deputy Spokesperson for the Department of State, and as a Director of Strategic Communications and Acting National Security Council Spokesperson. He's also served in a variety of positions in uh, East Asia and Pacific Affairs, as well as in overseas in China, Vietnam, and in Italy. Uh, Robert has also served as a Senior Advisor to the Undersecretary for Public Diplomacy, and as a National Security Fellow uh, to Senator Christine Gillibrand from New York. Uh, prior to joining the Department of State, he practiced law in East Asia and Europe in the US Army JAG Corps. 
And Robert, I know that you're also going to be joined uh, by your incoming economic officer, Seth Patch, and we look forward uh, to meeting Seth and working with him too. Uh, but let me go ahead and turn it over to you, you know, for your kind of uh, initial impressions uh, from the time that you've spent on the ground and, and how things are going. And then we'll uh, open it up for comments and questions. But with that, uh, Robert, the, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Let me just start by uh, thanking Steve uh, Lutz and Anna Burris for just for organizing today's events and for taking the time to meet with me uh, before I came out here. Um, that was extremely helpful. And I would also just say, Zor uh, Spas, Bayan uh, Han. It's, it's great to see you again on the line. And to everybody else, I'm Katatam Bash Baherben. We are. Uh, it's been a very active two months uh, since my arrival. And as um, uh, Her Excellency Bayan mentioned, uh, under the shadow of recent uh, uh, events in Afghanistan, a lot of uh, our work has been very deliberately to um, reassure both the, the public in the in the IKR as well as our, our government interlocutors and others that we meet with that um, you know, the United States is uh, committed to this region for the long haul. And we, we are saying that often, uh, clearly and directly. So um, it's, can't really uh, overemphasize just how much we, we are, emphasis we're putting on that, frankly. Um, it just matters a lot here, and the feedback we're, we are getting is, please be as public as possible, be confident, be meeting with as many um, you know, people as possible. So, Steve, I'm glad it looks like fun from afar, but I, but I assure you, I, I, am, uh, I am trying to work. <laughs> and to, to everyone on the line, I just say, I'm just so glad we have an active United States Iraq Business Council, and and you know, just judging at the list of companies that that are members, I'm just really pleased to see such diversity because the work that you're all doing is is important uh, to the United States economy and frankly to the the Kurdistan region's economy as well, and 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 that's what exactly what we want. We want to see a strong and prosperous um, Kurdistan region. And for that to happen, um, we need all of you. Uh, and we also recognize that, you know, the Kurdistan regional government is going to need, you know, economic diversification and, and, and foreign investment, frankly. And it's the private sector that's going to be the economic engine for growth. And we are you know, committed to supporting economic development and growth here, here in the Kurdistan region. So uh, all of the members of the United States Iraq Business Council, you're, you're key to helping um, us achieve that economic diversification and, and, and foreign investment. So expanding opportunities for, for US businesses is going to be, it is, it is an important part of the work uh, here at the consulate, and our economic team is going to be led uh, is, is is going to led by Seth Patch, and really looking forward to his uh, imminent arrival. And by imminent, I mean like uh, any second, because he we're going to be devoting a lot of uh, our efforts on commercial diplomacy. It's it's my hope that the consulate uh, can do more to help. American companies operate here in the Kurdistan region and to facilitate foreign direct, direct investment. Love to be showcasing United States technologies, US products, you know, trade shows, agriculture products, you know, conventions. I'd, I'd love to be doing more. And so we're going to be looking looking uh, uh, to, add our, to add our partners that are on this call today um, you know for, for opportunities that, that we can actually work together. Um, as, as Steve mentioned, I, I actually would really appreciate the chance to hear 
a little bit about the work um, that, that you're doing in, in the Kurdistan region and you know, specifically kind of your assessment of um, the business environment. I'd be very interested in hearing about that. Um, and, you know, and to be fair, that includes opportunities that, that, that you see. And I'd also, I'd like to hear about the challenges a little bit as well. Uh, that, would be, that would be very welcome too. Why don't I stop there, Stephen? If there's a yeah, yeah, I'll stop there. Well, Robert, thank you very much. Very, very helpful, and um, yeah, I, I think uh, you'll find that um, you'll certainly have willing partners, uh, not only in, in with respect to the U.S. Chamber, but with the companies that are assembled on here. And I and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention in um, you know in, in Iraq, there, we actually have. Uh, two nascent AMCHAMs. Um, we have an AMCHAM in the Kurdistan region of Iraq, and I see uh, our old friend Kurdo Jaff who helped stand that up. Uh, and there's some of the other board members here, as well as AMCHAM Iraq. And I see uh, Tim Mills, the president of that on here as well. Um, so you have other, other partners um, that are part kind of of the chamber federation uh, as well. And of course, uh, I see Dr. Miri from the, the Chaldean chamber uh, up in Michigan, uh, who's very active. Um, going back and forth as well. But let me go ahead and open it up. And first I'd like to call on uh, Matt Zeiss, uh, the co-chair of our, our US Iraq Business Council, and of course, uh, representing Hillwood HKN Energy. Um, Matt, um, no stranger, of course, uh, you're now in the private sector, but you know, for many years you wore uh, the USG hat, has a lot of interesting insights and perspectives, but would love to get uh, your initial take on things. And, and let me throw it over to you. Hey, thanks, Steve. And uh, Robert, it's great to see you again. And all I can do is echo Steve and, and Bayan Khan's uh, remarks about how we follow your vigorous activity on Twitter uh, with interest and, uh, and and keep it up. It's been great to watch. Um, and hopefully I'll see you uh, in our uh sooner than later. Um, I just, to your point, and I want to make sure everybody else has a chance to talk, but just to highlight uh, who we are, uh, we operate uh, the Sarsang block in the Dohuk, Dohuk province, and we are proud to have invested $1.6 billion in Kurdistan. Um, we've created over 2,100 jobs. Um, we've invested 20, 23, over $23 million in 27 different community projects. And hopefully when uh, we, we take you to our site, we'll be able to also show you uh, not only uh, our, our oil and gas facility, but also uh, the community projects we do around our area, and some of the one of the some of the six, uh, for instance, current community projects that are ongoing today, and then through all that, we've we uh, we have calculated that we've had a, a 2.6 billion dollar economic impact on the Kurdistan region. Um, we we believe with that last week we drilled the the cheapest and deepest well ever dug in, in Kurdistan, and it should and it and it's a. Uh, it's a signal to the to the extent to which we value uh, keeping costs low, and 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 the the extraordinary technical capabilities of our team, which has decades and decades of international experience operating all over the world. Um, and so we are very proud of our technical achievements in the field as we continue. Um, and thanks to the U.S. government and the U.S. Development Finance Corporation, which provided us a forty nine million million dollar loan, uh, we are expanding production. Uh, it's our saying uh, next year from 32,000 barrels a day to 55,000 barrels, barrels a day uh, with the 25,000 barrel Habitech facility. Um, and at which point that oil will be connected to the pipeline uh, in our region. And so those are significant developments and positive trajectories for our operations. I would just highlight a couple, um, I wouldn't say concerns, but um, some areas of, of, uh, of issue that we, we, we pay attention to, and that is uh, the continued commerciality of, this, of the region. Um, and in particular, uh, how all of us uh, and our companies can contribute to a, a coherent strategy for the region on how we capture gas and, and develop a gas market in Kurdistan and, and try to avoid uh, um, unilateral edicts uh, that, may, may, that may force companies to do things that are not in the best interest of Kurdistan in the long run. And so we look forward to working with uh, with some of the companies here and with the Kurdistan region in the future. But I would just flag maybe that's one of the, the key challenges we, we foresee going forward. So thanks for your time, Steve and Robert. Uh, great to see you again. Thanks, Matt. That, Robert, you're always that. most welcome to react to any of the comments or by all means. Well, yeah, let me just 
react a little bit and just say that, you know, some of the things that Matt just highlighted as far as, uh, you know, what uh, a United States company is bringing to uh, the Kurdistan region um, is, 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 is exactly the kind of thing that I would very much uh, be interested in help uh, amplify and uh, highlight here because we, we, we part of our message is that um, the United States is contributing to uh, the stability of the Kurdistan region and um, we're, our presence here is definitely uh, making, making things better and we are you know, committed to staying. And so some of that, uh, the job creation, uh, in addition to uh, some of the things that um, you know, are being done directly for the communities in which United States companies are working is, is, is very much the kind of thing that we would love to uh, partner with you to help uh, amplify. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Matt. And, and Robert, I would just add, uh, we're, we're excited. I know, uh, and Matt's very aware of this, and I know Bayan is as well, that the U.S. Department of Energy is working on a study, uh, a gas study, and uh, we certainly hope to uh, partner with all the kind of key stakeholders in helping on the, the launch of that. Um, moving a bit, there's no question that oil and gas will kind of continue to uh, underpin the economy in Iraq, but including the Kurdistan region. Um, but we also are, are focused on efforts at diversification and one of the more interesting companies and stories, uh, I want to turn to Yadgard next. Uh, he, he spoke um, at that big investment conference I mentioned, um, but it really is an interesting success story uh, on entrepreneurism and really bridging uh, the Kurdistan region with the United States. Um, Yadgard, if I can turn to you, uh, if you can share a little bit about uh, Lezo and what, what, uh, the, who the company is and, and what you're doing and what your aspirations are. Uh, thank you very much, Steve and Anna, as always, for considering Lezo to be part of uh, your programs. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Robert. Uh, my name is uh, Yadgar Marani. I am the CEO and co-founder of Lezo. Uh, Lezo is essentially the DoorDash or Grab Hub, you can say, of Iraq. Okay, uh, we're, we're one of the first, uh, we're, we are the first Iraqi uh, Kurdish startup to be backed by Y Combinator, the first uh, um, the same accelerator that has funded Door, uh, DoorDash, uh, Coinbase, uh, Dropbox, uh, Instacart, and you know many more very well-known unicorn uh, uh, startups in the U.S. Uh, here we take a different stand than what usually has been happening in Iraq uh, when it comes to which sector to you know focus on mostly. We take we took tech as as the key sector, and we uh, bridged you know uh, the uh, an, an investment uh, um, streamline between. The U.S. and Iraq. As, uh, we we managed to raise uh, one of the largest uh, seed rounds in Iraq, we uh, and Kurdistan. We managed to uh, uh, raise 1.1 million dollars, and with those 1.1 million dollars, we have uh, j uh, created almost 550 jobs uh, in in Erbil and Duhok and Suleimania and Baghdad, and we are continuously expanding it acro uh, across Iraq. We've managed to sell uh, over 40 million dollars worth of goods in our marketplace. Uh, and that's uh, in the course of uh, three years. Um, and, you know, we want to carry on shedding a, a, a different perspective and light on the, you know, uh, the role of the United States in, in Iraq and Kurdistan, and also to show a different uh, uh, Iraq uh, 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 and Kurdistan in terms of diversifying between the, the, the two uh, go uh, governments, uh, the Kurdistan uh, regional government and the uh, federal government. Uh, also, uh, we are we are strength we, we carry on and continue to strengthen the uh, the bridge uh, between U.S. and and Iraq and Kurdistan and the federal federal government. We are currently uh, raising our next round, and I think these are very exciting times. If we look at Egypt and we look at Pakistan, Pakistan this year managed to raise over two hundred million dollars, and that funding only came from startups, and it wasn't on the oil sector. Uh, same with Egypt. Egypt managed to raise more than $194 million only in 2021. And in India, I think it exceeded uh, $2.5 billion in 2021. And we will see the same uh, movement happening in Iraq. And we're very excited. I think this is a very exciting time uh, uh, in Iraq. And uh, 
yeah, uh, uh, hopefully this energy is going to be multiplied and uh, we're going to see uh, more success stories uh, across the country. So once again, it's a pleasure to meet you and hopefully uh, we can have a chance to, uh, to actually meet in person uh, in Erbil and to share more on, on, on our story and how we managed to live here. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Yagya. That, Yagya, that's, a, that's a, an inspiring story. And I'll confess that I think everybody that works at the consulate has the Zoom on their phone right now. So it's, it's definitely being used. Um, I, yeah, it, it, I, I very much appreciate your energy and uh, the vision here too. So I look forward to meeting you in person. Please reach out. Thank you, Yagar, and uh, yeah, I would amplify. It's always great to see the energy that you bring, um, you know, to the sector. So we're grateful for that. I want to next go to one of the uh, oldest members of the council, uh, not in terms of his age, but in terms of being a member of the council, uh, Subi Kadari, um, and then uh, Chris Bowers at Chevron. You'll be on deck, and I see Pierce has his hand up. But Subi, let me go to uh, to you, if I may. The, thank you, Steve. Um, um, and um, Consulate Paladino, nice to nice to meet you. Um, I am a, we are members of the U.S. Chamber. I'm a um, proud member of the U.S. Uh, Chamber, um, U.S. Courtesy and Business Council um, as well. Um, we see value in that and we they've been great advocates for us in Kurdistan. Our company is Kaderi Group. I started with my brother and father in 2003. We're originally from Baghdad, but we work all over Iraq. Uh, in Kurdistan being uh, a really a significant place. We, we have about 300 employees in Kurdistan. We work across uh, heavy equipment rentals. We work in oil and gas, um, equipment supply and some services, and we work in food distribution. So if we have the pleasure of having you come over to our facility, you'll see some uh, wonderful pistachios from California in our warehouses over there in uh, Erbil. Um, that's one of my uh, claims to fame that I found a way to we're that efficient that we found a way to get some pistachios from uh, from California over to uh, Iraq in Iran's backyard. So, uh, um, uh, alongside that, you know, we're we are we are a very active employer. Uh, we're very ad, uh, active in the region. Uh, you know, Kurdistan has its you know its fair share of challenges, um, but the the great thing about it is that there's some accountability and somebody there that's willing to take our call and. Uh, help us through it. So I, I, I find it to be a, a, a business friendly environment for whatever the Kurds can control and what they can control, they can not control, you know, the geopolitical issues and, and, and the challenges in the region. So uh, thank you for, um, you know, for your service. And, and, and I'm sure you'll be hearing from us. We uh, on, on, on one of a variety of our, our, our activities in the region. So thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Uh... Seth Patch and I would love to uh, come eat pistachios. Okay. <laughs> Deal. All right. Um, next, if I may, let me go to Chris Bowers at uh, Chevron, board member of our council. Chris. Hi, thank you. And uh, nice to meet uh, uh, new friends and to see, see a lot of old friends around as well. Uh, Robert, just by way of uh, background, I'm uh, uh, we served um, in KRG as, uh, uh, as British Control General way back uh, at a time. I, my counterpart at that time was that was uh, Alex Lascaris, which shows uh, <laughs> how long I've been around around the block. And uh, I think it's uh, I would commend your your new colleague David Hunt actually, who who who's a, a neighbour of of mine not far away in Northwest London. He's uh, he's an excellent chap, and I always say. Congratulations, because I, I think you've got one of the one of the best jobs. Uh, well, I certainly know it was in the British Foreign Service, and I think in 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 the U.S. Foreign Service, I would take it as well, because you'll find a very engaged uh, government, uh, and more than that, you know, wider within within the society. And I think I think you can you know you get a lot of that energy. Um, and I often I often have a sense that that the Kurdistan's like a coiled spring. Um, sort of ready to <clears throat> ready to expand expand further, and I I guess one of the long-standing challenges um, is is trying to get trying to get the government out of the private sector to allow the private sector to to hear some of the some of the great 
great stuff that uh, that Yadgar is doing, and I'm sure uh, represented a lot wider within within civil society and within within that younger generation. Um, in in terms of the more general sense as to um, uh, as to how we're doing and and how we see the future, um, I think I would align myself very closely with with what Matt was saying. Um, we do feel a little bit that the industry needs a bit of, um, uh, whereas of course there is, you know, great potential in 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 um, uh, outside of the oil and gas industry. We do feel it needs uh, a little bit of TLC at the moment, um, and uh, maybe we can be not taken for granted, but you know, um, you know, we do need a little bit of a, a little bit more focused attention, I think. Um, but I'm sure we can talk about that in in uh, uh, in more more private settings. But I think Matt pretty much hit the nail on the head. Thanks, Chris. I uh, I actually had dinner uh, last night with David Hunt, and yeah, he's um, a good guy. <laughs> brought, uh, the American team together with the uh, with the with the UK team, and uh, we're definitely trying to we, we compare notes a lot over here, and I. I am interested in hearing, um, you know, what types of consulate events, um, you know, in partnership with like-minded um, uh, consulates here in Erbil would be useful um, as far as coordination or um, you know, working with U.S. Uh, um, um, Iraq Business Council members as well. So, yeah, thanks for for mentioning uh, uh, the like-minded as it were. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Always, always good to see you, and uh, appreciate your perspectives. Appreciate that very oh, sorry, much. Sorry, I just say I, I, I apologize for being late to the meeting. I'm afraid it was on the board. Fine, no worries. Um, Piers, let me come next to you. Hey, thank you so much, Steve and Anna. Is ever the, such a, a wonderful and timely webinar, and um, very good to see so many uh, old friends and new faces. Brian Khan, very good to see you. Uh, it's been too long since I've seen you in DC. And um, uh, Consul General Palladino and, and indeed Seth, uh, who I've had a chance to talk to already. Um, uh, welcome, welcome to our bill. As Chris said, it's, it's the plum job. I would imagine amongst diplomats, there is nothing more uh, uh, fascinating and, and, and uh, no better place for opportunities for the private sector as well. Um, if, I, if I was going to uh, raise one issue, the um, uh, and Steve mentioned it earlier in, in, in the webinar, is the, uh, the DFC uh, event that's coming up at the end of the, end of the month. Um, I, I think it's very timely, in particular, as uh, you, I'm sure you've seen in the press, the recent $250 million financing provided to um, uh, Crescent, uh, which shows that uh, the Kurdistan region is, is, is right at the forefront of the US government's um, support for the private sector. Um, can you maybe sort of run through how um, you hope to encourage the attention of the DFC, uh, of DSC and other elements, sort of financing elements of the US government towards Kurdistan, um, because uh, the, their support is, uh, is wonderfully well received and um, can, uh, can really um, provide a, a, a lot of help um, in the region. Thank you. We've been, we've been talking a lot about uh, last week's announcement from uh, the DFC and um, getting great um, coverage here um, as far as just that, you know, that American investment. Um, and it's definitely resonating well. And it's something, you know, frankly, that we're going to be talking about, I think, uh, publicly uh, for, the, for the foreseeable future, because it is a uh, very solid example of um, you know, the fact that uh, this relationship is looking towards the future. Um, next week, we'll also be celebrating uh, on, on, on the Wednesday evening the, the, the structural completion of our, our new consulate that we're building here. And it is gonna be the biggest consulate uh, in the world, frankly. And so um, not public yet, but looking forward to uh, having uh, 
um, uh, the Prime Minister of Karaji, Prime Minister, uh, join join us out there and to really, you know, kind of hammer home that uh, this relationship is it needs room to grow, and that is why we have we're building the biggest consulate in the world right here uh, in Erfield. So. Thank you very much, and uh, yeah, I look forward to, to meeting both yourself and, and Seth in Erbil shortly. Thank you. Yeah, a really, really great point, great question, um, Piers. And, and on that DFC point, as I mentioned, um, we had spoken to DFC and uh, USG, particularly um, uh, US, the US Embassy in Baghdad, regarding the town hall. We've sent a, a significant tranche of individuals in to receive invitations. Anna's been doing a bang up job in helping uh, collate and coordinate that. So if, if anybody uh, wants to receive the invitation, there are some parameters that they're recommending uh, that companies fit within, uh, but she can provide guidance on that. So please do reach out to her um, following this call and, and she would be glad to help um, make sure you get on the list and get the invitation. Um, next, I um, want to go to uh, a, a gentleman that, and, and, uh, that I just met actually, um, he was, he's uh, here in, in the U.S. We had uh, we broke bread in old Old Town Alexandria, and I got some great insight on to what is a an amazing well, it's more than just a project, uh, but enterprise uh, that's going on, and it's it is one of those diversification efforts. And having grown up on a farm in Indiana, I have deep appreciation for it. Um, Rawaz Ibrahim, if I can call on you regarding uh, what you're doing, then we'll go to uh, Rawaz Roof. <laughs> Also on the screen, another friend uh, who uh, has a lot of things cooking as well. But uh, Rawas, if I can turn to you. Uh, thank you, Steve. I hope everyone can hear me. Okay, I see a lot of heads nodding. Zozo Bakheve Kak Robert. Thank you for everyone attending. Uh, perfect Kurdish, by the way, for two months. This is extraordinary. I can see the, the emotional investment you're putting into this country and uh, this region. So I'm very pleased to see yet another consul general that enters uh, our region and tries to not only diversify, but push everything to the next level. I'm currently in Potomac. So I, I met Steve the other day. I've rescheduled my flight already two times because uh, there's just so much you can do over here and everyone receives you with open arms. So I'm very pleased to see that. Um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the company, what we're doing. I'll try to keep it short because uh, there's a lot to talk about it. It's a, it's a very big project. It's the biggest agricultural project of Iraq. And of course, uh, Robert, I, I invite you to come see us once I'm back. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you will be very pleased to see what we've done and what we can accomplish, except, especially with having a relationship with the United States in the future. So we as a company, Green Eastland, what we're doing is having everything from the seed to the fork. And that sounds like a lot of things to do since we're talking about the very little seed to the end product, the end users get. And by doing so, we started with the new Erbil Food Distribution Center, which is the trading ground that starts exactly in the middle between the seed and the fork. Um, with this uh, trading ground, what we're trying to eradicate is uh, most importantly corruption. Uh, we're trying to put the sector into a level where we have uh, better infrastructure, better overview on what is coming from where, uh, to push more on food safety, and also build farmers to become traders. So if we look at uh, the chain of Kurdistan or Iraq, the weakest link is the farmer. And reinforcing those farmers will reinforce the entire chain and will we'll not let this chain uh, break, as we have seen in Afghanistan. Um, what we're focusing on as well is, of course, uh, not only turning those, those uh, farmers into businessmen, but turning those farmers into like this 2.0 farmers that we have right now, introducing technology. We have a data center uh, in place, a public data center, where we collect the data of what is imported, what is sold, what is harvested, how much, what variety, et cetera, to build business intelligence and help the farmer furthermore to be able to make decisions in, in terms of when is the market right for harvest? Uh, when am I expecting more profits? How can I make money and not lose money? We're looking at a region that is very import strong. So a lot of money from, from the country going outside of the country 
to unofficial or official enemies of ours. We have Turkey and Iran who are the biggest benefactor of the imported products we have, and yet we're sending them money and money and money. The same thing we can do by sending products outside the country. So with the soil we have, with the sun we have, with the water, sorry, with the water we have, we can do a lot in turning this import to an export strong country. That's why we've started now with the first part of the seed to the pork, which is the growing part. We have hydroponic systems um, in, in, uh, under construction at the moment. We're looking at having hydroponic systems region-wide. We have 75 hectares right now at the moment being constructed. It's 70% of the workforce is gonna be mostly female. At the same time, we have this, um, let's call it business education and research center that we're constructing. Uh, it's called the World Horty Center. It's a structure that the, the, the Dutch have invented where you combine all those three elements where you can go into deep research and as well go into having training. So vocational training up to doctorate degrees uh, where we not only focus on higher education, but even trim the workforce so they can work accordingly on international standards within those greenhouses. So we can have products that are internationally accepted. And then if we look how this entire thing is going to grow, we're looking at the back end where there, we have processing, we have packaging, labeling, marketing, and so on and so forth. So this is in short what we do. Just to give you an insight, like uh, since you've asked how the business climate is. I mean, uh, I was born and raised in Austria. I, I came back to Kurdistan four years ago. And I mean, in those four years, a lot has happened. It was, it was a very difficult time. It was... Uh, economically very, very uh, difficult. But um, I've never seen a place where you have so much um, opportunities, where so much is needed and is also well received. There's a lot you can do and we have a great government that lays a great strategy and they're focusing now finally uh, to see that the private sector has to be reinforced and the private sector seriously needs a strong win in order to have this economic stability and furthermore for the region to grow. So I hope I didn't take too much of your time. I'm looking forward to uh, meeting you in person and then we can have longer talks and thank you. Thanks, Shuaz. Please invite Seth and me. We'd be, we'd be uh, honored, honored to see you. With pleasure. And, and I would just add uh, the one thing I think Robert as a, as a um, a kind of policy strategy is, I think it'd be interesting, you know, if we're going to get more agriculture, U.S. agriculture companies involved, I think the conversation has to be around food security. Um, if conversations are about, you know, kind of jobs and what amounts to, to really small family farms, um, that's not going to attract the type of um, uh, companies and, and investment that I think Rawas is trying to do. So I think um, on the policy level with the government having a, a conversation around um, equipping the Kurdistan region in terms of food security, I think, uh, would be one that would be, you know, certainly, I think, welcome and, and one that the business community would welcome. Um, but I'm no expert in that, but I think that's that's the direction that we would like to see it taken. Um, let me next turn to um, uh, Rawaz, and I have to say, if, if uh, Rawaz, you took me to the, I think, the most interesting, um, I'm not sure if it's still there in, in Suli, uh, uh, art gallery. Um, and, I, and, and Robert, I just, again, uh, I, I know you're very busy with work, but if you ever have time and that art gallery is still there, uh, Rawaz, you have to take Robert to that. That, that, was, uh, that was amazing. But let me, let me turn to you uh, for, for your update and, and your brief. Uh, sure, thank you very much, Steve. And uh, uh, well, welcome everyone for uh, on your new assignments. And yes, I'm from Soleimania. So I took Steve on this uh, walk basically to the culture factory. It's still there, it's actually growing. There are lots of projects happening there. Um, that's just my artistic side that I always try to promote those things because life is not just about business and money. So I think that's very important. And especially in Soleimania, there's a vibrant art um, culture that, uh, that we want to retain. Um, I don't want to go too much into uh, details in myself, but I'm Rawaz Rauf. I'm a founding board member of uh, the Amcham Kurdistan together with uh, Ka Kordo and uh, Dori, who I do not believe is here today, but um, um, more relevant to this forum, I am also a partner at the Euphrates Ventures. So Euphrates Ventures is a fund that was started uh, almost two months ago to look into investing in 
Iraqi startups, uh, especially Iraqi tech startups like Lezu and um, um, uh, primarily our objective is to grow um, tech companies that um, and accelerate their growth. We've already raised $20 million for the, for the ecosystem. We're encouraged by having um, uh, incubators and accelerators in the market that are helping these startups grow. And we appreciate the US consulate support for those um, enablers, because otherwise we will be having a very, very difficult time trying to uh, source and find startups. Uh, actually, just yesterday, we announced our first startup uh, investment in Kurdistan specifically. It's a, it's a very interesting uh, lady, Basima uh, Kesk. So they're working on um, renewable projects in Kurdistan, renewable air conditioning projects in Kurdistan, which uh, DC powered air conditioning, uh, which is, we think uh, is really exciting and it's a really timely um, investment on our side. But we continue to look at opportunities we have already invested in the largest e-commerce company in Iraq, which is Miswag. And um, the, there is another company that we've also invested into, which is Al Sariya, which has over 450 motorcycles in Baghdad. We are not looking at companies that are purely Kurdistan based. We do think that the technology sector is big enough in Iraq that could allow for both, but uh, we are flexible in terms of where the establishment is whether it's in Kurdistan or in Baghdad. Um, so th that's just how, what I wanted to make a comment about. It would be great to touch base with everyone. Uh, and we're looking for new, fresh ideas in terms of investment. And we want to just um, you know, mobilize the amounts and hopefully raise even further funds going forward for the ecosystem. It's great, Was. Thank you so much for the introduction. And uh, I hope. I can see you in Suleimania. Okay, that would be wonderful. Thank you. And next, if I may go to um, Jeff Holacek at Honeywell, and then I see that you know, Iman has a uh, hand raised. So, but Jeff, let me go to you um, at Honeywell. Hi, thank you uh, for calling me, Steve, and uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Council General. Uh, Honeywell uh, has. Uh, a small office in Erbil, and we've got uh, big intentions to help um, the, the, the government. Um, we uh, have a lot of technology. Uh, unfortunately, right now, we're, we're only uh, kind of focused in the oil and gas sector. Uh, we've been looking for opportunities to kind of expand in other areas, and we'll continue to do that. We've uh, visited your uh, offices um, recently, and we'd like to visit you again and kind of give you a briefing on, on how we're um, working with uh, local um, uh, kind of key players in the refining industry to, to bring um, cutting edge technologies to bear to help uh, uh, provide the most efficient uh, uh, refinery solutions possible. Um, and we want to expand. So thank you and looking forward to working with you closely. Thanks, Steve. Jeff, thank you. And uh, it was good to hear you. Um, yeah, Iman from the MGM Kurdistan region. Let me uh, go to you next with your hand raised. And then uh, I see Kurdo has his hand raised. So we'll go to Iman, then Kurdo. Hi, everyone. My name is Iman. I am the administrator of MGM Kurdistan and personal assistant for uh, the president of MGM Kurdistan, Dori Abuzeid. I would like to say a few words on his behalf. Um, Mr. Dori sends his regards and apologize for missing the meeting. He wanted to attend, but unfortunately he couldn't make it because he's traveling. He, is, um, he extends his best wishes to Mr. Palladino and congrats him on the new role. And he would like to invite you to our office for a face-to-face -face, uh, introduction. Uh, we will be honored to host you and we are looking forward to meet you. Um, thank you and congratulations again, Mr. Palladino. Thank you so much, Shiman. Um, be honored to come visit. So let's let's we'll get in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Iman. And uh, let me turn to Kurdo um, Kurdo Joff. Uh, good to see you, Kurdo. Kurdo, you're muted still. Steve, can you hear me now? Sure can. Yeah. Hi, Steve. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Very kind of you. 
And hello, everyone. Uh, first, I would like to welcome Robert to the Kurdistan region. And I'm looking forward to meeting you in person, hopefully either here in Suleimani or in Erbil in the very near future. And I'm sure there will be a lot to talk and discuss. Uh, I started Ancham uh, Kurdistan, and I had the idea I discussed with Steve back in 2012. And he was very supportive, uh, to be honest. It wouldn't happen without Steve. And since then, we moved forward. And that was for a full belief in the future of the Kurdistan region and the economy of the Kurdistan region and the opportunities in the Kurdistan region. So uh, that was very clear. And of course, with the support of the US and the American innovation and the American companies, I'm sure will be there. So I'm very op positive and optimistic about that and about the business opportunities, the challenges, uh, we are moving forward and there is lots of uh, improvement and I believe it will be even better in the near future. So this is briefly and I hope I can meet uh, everyone soon in a bigger event face to face either in Erbil or DC. And also I have a message from the, uh, the president of the, let's say the head of the Sleimani Chamber of Commerce and I believe they all share and uh, Ms. Bayan Khan, she highlighted that they all want to move forward with the memorandum being signed with the U.S. Chamber and uh, activated and uh, COVID delayed it, but uh, they'd like to see that happening and moving forward and making the commitments between them. Uh, as for Anchab, now Dory is taking the lead. He's the president and he's doing a great job and we are all grateful for his uh, leadership. Uh, I'm staying as a board member and uh, doing what I can to do to promote the businesses between the U.S. and the Kurdistan region and uh, with full confidence and positivity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kurdo. We really do appreciate that and always thank you. Um, I did want to turn to uh, Dr. Mary. I think Dr. Mary, we're coming up uh, on the hour, so you'll, uh, I, I do want to uh, give Robert uh, one final chance for any final uh, concluding thoughts, but Dr. Mary, going to go to you with the last uh, comment question. Yeah, thank you, Steve, and uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Paladino. Uh, we Dr. Mary, your, uh, your audio is very, um, very muted, um, and apologies for barking, but um, I Steve, I'm sorry. Is this any better? Uh, a, a little better, yes, yes. It, it made okay, I apologize. Uh, uh, elevate yes, your... Uh, yes, uh, I apologize. Technology. I'm becoming an old man here, a dinosaur. Um, uh, Steve, uh, welcome, of course, and uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Palladino, for a wonderful introduction. Um, uh, briefly, um, uh, we are... Uh, the Chaldean American Chamber of Commerce in Michigan with the largest uh, chamber of commerce. We are Iraqi Americans. Uh, we are trying to advocate and uh, encourage people to invest in the KRG region and throughout Iraq. Uh, obviously, there are challenges. Uh, we uh, hope uh, uh, to facilitate things and act as a bridge uh, for the uh, business community in Michigan to invest uh, in the KRG region. Uh, we plan to open an office, hopefully, in the next uh, couple of months and plan also a visit to our bill uh, in November with a business team. Uh, hopefully we can have a chance to meet. Uh, but again, uh, thank you so much, uh, Steve and Anna, and uh, welcome, Mr. Palladino. Thank you. Dr. Mary, thank you very much. And uh, as always, uh, we always expect great things out of the state of Michigan. So uh, you're doing great work and appreciate every appreciate all your efforts and coordination with us. We're grateful for that. Um, well, I do want to give, um, in fact, uh, Bayan, you're back on here. So I want to turn to uh, Bayan and certainly uh, Robert for any, any final concluding thoughts you may have uh, before uh, we all depart today. Uh, but Bayan, any, any, any observations, any uh, concluding comment? Uh, thank you, Steve. I, I was listening, but uh, I didn't want to <laughs> be on the screen the whole time. Uh, well, first, it's it's great to hear uh, Robert's perspective on things and 
to hear from the various businesses that have invested in Kurdistan and I hope are doing very well. We consider you as very important partners uh, for Kurdistan today and for the future. And uh, we hear the message from some colleague oil and gas sector about perhaps some of the communications that need to be improved. Uh, we, we hear you loud and clear. And uh, we're very excited that uh, the Chaldean American Chamber of Commerce is still considering visiting Kurdistan this fall. So Dr. Miri, we look forward to coordinating with you on that. Um, and again, really a very big thank you to all of the companies. Uh, oh yes, and, and Amcham, Amcham Kurdistan and Iraq. Uh, we're delighted that they're both beginning to take off and absolutely we're ready to support them in any way we can. So thank you, Steve and Anna for organizing this and for allowing me the opportunity to speak. And uh, again, thank you, Robert, for everything that you're doing. Thank you, Bayan, and, and Robert would, would love to give you the last word here. The last word, um, I, I just think that, you know, the private sector is, is the key um, to, to uh, economic growth. And what all of you are doing is, is absolutely necessary for, for building the bridge um, stronger bridge between the Kurdistan region and the United States. So I, I, thank you. Um, you know, please view the consulate as, um, you know, a, a partner. And um, it's really my hope that we are going to be able to uh, uh, do more um, to help American companies um, and to facilitate uh, a more investment and help create jobs. So um, th thanks so much, Steve and Anna as well for pulling this together. I, I, I hope we can um, have in-person uh, engagement and, and, and promotion of this important uh, relationship uh, you know, here in the Kurdistan region. And so I, I, I welcome uh, the visitors very much so and please keep in touch and um, th thank you for the warm welcome. Um, because the warm welcome I feel you know, on this call today is also frankly what I feel as I, as I travel through the Kurdistan region. This really is uh, an amazing place with a lot of energy and it, and it makes it, um, frankly, it, it makes it easy to, um, um, to, 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 to want to build this bridge uh, even even better. So I'll end at that. Thank you, Steve. Well, Robert, thank you very much. And know that you have uh, a partners uh, on, online here and we do look forward uh, to returning to in person. Um, and I wanna thank you and the new team, Seth, and we very much look forward to working with you. Uh, and we appreciate your leadership. Uh, you, you just jumped right into it and we're grateful for that. And uh, we appreciate your emphasis on uh, the economic pillar of the relationship, which we think we can only deepen and grow uh, to everyone's benefit. So thank you to all the companies. As I mentioned, um, regarding that DFC town hall, uh, do reach out to Anna Burris, uh, my colleague, if you have any questions or need to get on a list for that. I think most people on here are already on that list, but if you want to be safe, uh, please ping Anna and she can help you on that. But Robert, thank you so much. We look forward to working with you and Bayan as always, uh, great to see you and appreciate your comments. And thank you all for taking time out of your busy days to be with us. We'll be in touch. Thank you.